Regarding the Baha'i funeral service, it is extremely simple as it consists only of a congregational prayer to be read before burial. Your National Spiritual Assembly should take great care lest any uniform procedure or ritual in this matter be adopted or imposed upon the friends. The danger in this, as in some other cases regarding Baha'i worship, is that a definite system or rigid rituals and practices be developed among the believers. The utmost simplicity and flexibility should be observed. Shoghi Effendi. So this week, our speaker is Mr. John Hockness, and he, his topic is, how do Baha'is bury their dead? From the frigid North Dakota prairie, John Hockness is the son of a grocer. His father was the first state descendant cited by the governor, and he was a trader with the Lakota. John is a Vietnam era veteran. He holds degrees from five universities, has been a social worker for 10 years and a public school teacher for 25 years and a college instructor for four years. John served on two Baha'i local spiritual assemblies, a Baha'i teaching committee in Houston, and he volunteered for a period of service over nine summers at Lou Helen Baha'i School. He's been a Baha'i since 1979. John's love is Baha'i writings and world literature, and he considers himself a reader. The best experience of his life was pioneering in China from 2012 to 2015, where he was awarded the Pudong Library Guest Lecture Achievement Award in 2013. So with that, I'll hand it off to Mr. Hockness. Hello, everyone. This will be my presentation. And uh, that opening uh, reading about Baha'i burials is going to be um, central to my talk. I might repeat that quote. So um, I think I will start with that the uh, Baha'i faith is a worldwide religion. So um, I was thinking probably maybe what's natural to us, to human being, is a continuation of where we were before. So that's why um, Moses was rejected, Christ was rejected, Muhammad was rejected, because it wasn't uh, the experience of before. And so the Baha'i faith runs into this. Um, so with burial, you might want to, or with marriage, like Baha'is have a cons parental consent in marriage. So this might also be, um, come as a surprise to some, why parents need to consent? Let the lovers do what they want to do and so on and so forth. Just let it be the natural way. So um, I don't think there's too much in the Baha'i burial that um, is as um, maybe contrary to the existing order is like say alcohol. <laughs> That is very contrary to the existing order because uh, Baha'u'llah forbid the drinking of alcohol. So, um, but there's some things in the burial that might be, um, well, for all the worldwide, there's going to be some things that are just strange or different. And that's part of the worldwide. But we'll get into that and um, and uh, I became Baha'i in 1979, so I'll just say a little bit about the Baha'i faith. And um, the big topic at that time was martyrdom. So I was a new Baha'i and I learned all about martyrdom. Why? Because when I became Baha'i Ayatollah Khomeini, was martyring the Baha'is in Iran. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll get my chance to be martyred. And, because um, I mean, I didn't know how far this thing reached. So about, so the Baha'i faith, that, that's, um, I, I always consider the two, the two, people say, well, how do you introduce the Baha'i faith? Well, to progressive revelation, I'm not gonna use that. To me, the other thing besides progressive revelation that we accept the main prior manifestations of God prophets, um, God keeps sending them. But the other part that's very interesting to me is the international aspect. 
and uh, Abdul Baha, Baha was the guardian. They really um, succeeded at that. And in only 179 years, we are as international as Christians, probably more international than, than Muslims, second largest group. And um, it's really amazing. It took 900 years for Christianity to reach Norway. 179 years were as widespread as Christianity. We're almost on every. We're in every continent for sure. So, okay, let me start being the Baha'i burial is the Baha'i law. Um, I'm going to start with um, share, share some opening paragraphs, some of the most beautiful writing of Baha'u'llah, bar none, the opening of the most holy book, the Kitabi Akhtas, because that gives us a uh, working platform for this of why, what the Baha'i law means and why we might, why we choose to follow it. So this is the first paragraph of the most holy book. I think, I think the two most beautiful paragraphs from Baha'u'llah are this one and the first par two paragraphs of the book of certitude. The first duty prescribed by God for his servants is a recognition of him who is the day spring of his revelation and the fountain of his laws, who representeth the Godhead in both the kingdom of his cause and the world of creation. Whoso achieveth this duty hath attained unto all good, and whoso is deprived thereof hath gone astray, though he be the author of every righteous deed. It behooveth every one who reacheth this most sublime station, this summit of transcendent glory, to observe every ordinance of him who is a desire of the world. These twin duties are inseparable. Neither is acceptable without the other. Thus hath it been decreed by him who is the source of divine inspiration. Now I'm going to share one more. I want to say something that I don't understand myself why um, the Baha'i faith came so easy to me. So when this holy book we're reading, uh, when it was first translated into English, we had a synopsis before smaller book, but then we, we got this about 15 years ago. Um, the House of Justice put out a, a letter asking people to be patient with it because maybe it would say some things they're not ready for. And um, when I became Baha'i in 1979, I had some liberal ideas. I heard about this Universal House of Justice and I was had my typewriter and I was... Um, typing out some of the, my, my ideas I was gonna to send to this. I heard there was, the Baha'i Faith had this Universal House of Justice they were in charge of. And I had my letters and I was gonna mail them to House of Justice. But then I read my two ideas. I read some of the Baha'i books and they, um, they said, don't, th this is wrong from Baha'u'llah. Well, I became Baha'i through Baha'u'llah, not through the Baha'is. Uh, I was arguing like I usually did with everyone. And I told the Baha'is, okay, bring me your Bible, bring me your Quran. Because I'd read the Quran by then. I was kind of switching from being a Christian to a Buddhist then, because I loved the writings of Lao Tzu and Paramahansa Yogananda and Confucius others. So they gave me the Book of Certitude and that I became a Baha'i reading the Book of Certitude. I said, this is it. So, um, so I'm not, I don't have any, uh, I just follow the, the Kitabi Akhtas myself from American. I don't, this is unusual to me. I should, I should be one of the Baha'is who question, why, why this, why that? But I just don't, I just fell in love with Baha'u'llah and what he wrote. So I took up my ideas and the, Type right. Oh, I'm glad I didn't mail that because when Bahala said um, these liberal ideas were not correct, oh, I'm wrong. And they, I thought they were brilliant ideas. Animals had souls, was one of them. 
And Baha'u'llah said, no, Abdu Baha said, animals said, spirit, not a soul. So I tore that up. Okay, I thought bears were like human, coming from Scandinavia. It's a nice myth we have. Okay, one more. O ye peoples of the world, know assuredly that my commandments are, my lamp, are the lamps of my loving providence among my servants and the keys of my mercy for my creatures. Thus hath it been sent down from heaven of the will of your Lord, the Lord of revelation, were any man to taste the sweetness of the words which the lips of the all merciful have willed to utter, he would, though the treasures of the earth be in his possession, renounce them one and all, that he might vindicate the truth of even one of his commandments, shining above the day springs of his bountiful care and loving kindness. And the last one is a famous one. Most Baha'is know. Think not that we have revealed unto you a mere code of laws. Nay, rather, we have unsealed the choice wine with the fingers of might and power. To this beareth witness that which the pen of revelation hath revealed. Meditate upon this, O men of insight. Now I'm going to share some um, brief quotes to round this off. So um, I give the authoritative version of the burial. And then I, as I talk, I'm giving the non-authoritative version of the burial. And uh, then after that, I'm going to share at the end some photos of um, Baha'i cemeteries, and um, I can't have some other photos that, uh, of a coffin of the Baha'i rings photos, and um, and uh, then we'll get to the questions. So, so that is an introduction to why um, the Baha'is would um, follow this burial law and burial custom. And as I said, um, there might be uh, an inclination of, well, why doesn't just Baha'u'llah keep the status quo? Let uh, India do it that way, Africa do it that way, and um, we just do our own thing, Baha'u'llah. And um, that's probably what they told Christ. And um, Probably what a lot of people told Muhammad was chased. Muhammad was chased through Arabia for many years. And, um, and uh, most peaceful person, just like uh, all of them were peaceful. And finally, uh, Mahala, Muhammad defended himself after being persecuted a lot of his life. And... Um, Baha'u'llah is the first manifestation said, put down your knives. We're not going to defend ourselves. And that's a mystery that could be talked to at another blog, how, um, how the Baha'i faith is going to um, succeed without uh, armed defense. The Babi is the first, the, the forerunner to Baha'u'llah, the Bab. He defended himself. Reluctantly, they did. Well, Bob didn't, but his followers at Fort Tabarsi put up a valiant fight, and it's a very important story to the beginnings of the Baha'i faith. Okay, I'm just going to read the bottom paragraph. Um, we'll go over the top. The, 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 the Bob prescribed the deceased should be interred in a coffin made of crystal or polished stone. And uh, we're going to get the details on that because it also includes uh, wood. And now it includes composite material and cement. But uh, let me read this bottom one. I want to talk about this briefly. With regards to the hesitation you have experienced because of the Baha'i teachings on burial, it is to be expected that when one begins to learn about the faith, one encounters aspects of teaching that are different from one's beliefs. 
Naturally, the customs and views of people worldwide vary greatly with regard to issues such as burial practices. Yet in coming to an understanding that Baha'u'llah is the manifestation of God for this day, that his revelation reflects God's will for humanity, that his teachings are intended to unite the peoples of the world in one common faith, one can, over time, come to see the wisdom of his teachings and appreciate the importance of adopting them, confident that the all-knowing physician hath his finger on the pulse of mankind and recognize that no man, no man, however acute his perception, can ever hope to reach the heights which the wisdom of and understanding of the divine physician have attained. So we have this Baha'i burial, and it's not just do your own thing. You know, it's a standard like the Baha'i obligatory prayer, the Baha'i fast. It's a standard worldwide for the Baha'is to follow. And, um, and instead of... Um, and why, why Baha'u'llah chose this, you know, is beyond me. He's, he's the manifestation of God. Um, in the Baha'i faith, just Christ and Moses are divine. They speak from God, not like some of the American preachers and some of the Buddhist monks who say they commune with God and then they uh, then they, you can, you can see some of their teachings are not, it, it's just pretend, but uh, Christ does not pretend, and Buddha does not pretend, and uh, since I've been a Baha'i, this is from the Universal House of Justice, and that's another thing about our covenant, I guess I should, I was going to talk about that at first. I guess I should now. So um, Baha'is believe we have a, a first inviolable covenant. And the covenant of, of Christ and Moses and Krishna have been violated several times. And that's why you can say, well, these religions don't agree. No, the religions agree. but because they were passed down to humans who did the best they can, but uh, they had to make up their own mind on certain things and corruptions came in or just plain honest mistakes came in. And um, we Baha'is believe that this is unique. Now, when the Baha'i faith, um, when Muhammad died, you had Ali, the, grand, the, the son or grandson, I can't remember which, Son, or, I think son and the caliphate. Caliphate were Muhammad's greatest champions and supporters and they fought each other over and then they had the Shia Sunni split. And then we have the Christians splitting into like I, someone told me there's now a thousand Christian churches, different Christian churches. So there's a split onto what these and the Baha'i faith has never had a split. There's this thing called covenant breakers with small, they make, they maybe make a lot of noise on the internet, but in reality, there's only like five in Montana and um, a few and scattered around the earth. And um, they, if you find them on the internet, it's sad because they, they claim they have a lot of followers or something, but they're just disgruntled Baha'is. And you do get um, uh, for slander and malice. There's Baha'is who, who have said, well, we shouldn't talk about covenant breaking because uh, other religions, they don't understand this term. Yeah, everyone understands. I don't agree with that. Everyone understands slander and malice that um, if you, say, well, my neighbor's a bank robber and they're not. No, you get in trouble for saying that. Um, 
and you can't slander people. So if people slander Baha'u'llah, they uh, are not Baha'is, they're declared covenant breakers. There's a few in ancient, in old history, nowadays it doesn't hardly happen anymore, but some people follow them. So Abdu Baha got the uh, authority from Baha'u'llah that what Abdu Baha says, I am saying. So the covenant did not get break. And then we have all of Abdu Baha's books. We're going to have some of Abdu Baha's quotes here. And then when Abdu Baha died, it was in the provisions that the um, Abdu Baha's grandson, Shoghi Effendi, became the guardian. We have all his books. And the authority was passed on from Baha'u'llah and Abdu Baha to the guardian. And when the guardian died, uh, we had the Universal House of Justice elected. So what I'm just saying is I've been a Baha'i since 1979. And no one should believe this. You have to investigate it yourself, what I'm going to say. Because so I've been the House of Justice re, writes major letters every year and they write minor letters all the time. And I've read most of them, maybe all of them in English, not possible all of them. Might it be 98%? I said, I'm a reader. I really read things. And um, I haven't found a mistake. How is this possible? There are nine people. That's not possible. So don't believe it, but I believe it. If you investigate for the truth, you might find that um, the Pope writes a lot of brilliant letters, but I'm not, I found mistakes. Um, Billy Graham, uh, American evangelist, wrote brilliant letters. There's uh, Mullahs writing brilliant letters. Lao Tzu's wrote brilliant letters about Buddha, about Taoism. But um, this is right now. So, um, so this is the covenant from the House of Justice and, um, and the burial is, uh, we're going to find out what the burial is in more detail. The, and also uh, this, my sources is, are from the Kitabi Akdas, Lights of Guidance, and developing distinctive communities. Now, Lights of Guidance and Developing Distinctive Communities are books about Baha'i uh, authorized quotes. The preparation of the body for burial is careful washing and placing a shroud of white cloth, silk preferably, Shoghi Effendi. We're gonna, I have a better one on that, more detailed. With reference to your two questions concerning the washing of the body, there's nothing in the writing stating who should wash the body nor what should be used in the water. Um, okay, I'll just say, let's look at this one. Um, and um, I don't have a more detailed one on that. So um, we're going to come to some Baha'is want everything spelled out just perfectly. They have a lot of questions. Well, we're going to see again in more quotes that, uh, and, the, and the Guardian explained this. No, I'm not going to explain everything to you. The, you you're a Baha'i. We have some general statements, and you have to just use your head and use your, that's all you need. This is what you need. You don't need to be told um, uh, the temperature of the water, or can you use rose water or uh, tap water or, and, and wash the feet. For, no, this is what it says. The Bob told us to bury the dead in silk if possible in coffins or crystal. Why? Because the body, though now dust, was once exalted by the immortal soul of man. Isn't that beautiful? In the Bayan, the Bob specified that the body of the sea should be wrapped in five silks of silk or cotton. Baha'u'llah confirmed this provision and added the stipulation that for those whose means are limited, a single sheet of either fabric will suffice. Very clear. Um, so five 
of silk or cotton and 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 oh the next one i really like this one it goes to what i was saying about de wanting details when asked whether the five sheets mentioned in the law referred to five full-length shrouds or five cloths cloths which were here to here here so customarily used but all responded that the intention is the use of five cloths. <laughs> this tickles me. So <laughs> Bahala just repeated what they asked him. He didn't respond. I just find some humor in that. Use of five cloths. Use, I'm not gonna, this is enough. Concerning the way in which the body should be wrapped, there's nothing in the Baha'i writings to define how the wrapping of the body is to be done either when five cloths are used or only a single sheet. At present, the Baha'is are free to use their judgment in the matter. So if you find a Baha'i who's saying, okay, you have to wrap it this way with these five cloths, I've decided. Okay, that's, what, that's fine for that Baha'i and that family. But that is not in the Baha'i. That's, we all can do that. And you're going to run into that in the Baha'i faith. But this is the fact that we are left for our own self and we can do it. And, and it's natural in a funeral, I believe, that you feel, oh, I'm inadequate. So maybe a family member doesn't do this. A lot of times it is a family member. A wife of, might wrap the husband, husband might wrap the wash and wrap the wife foot or a child. But if you want to go to the local spiritual assembly, um, probably local, a lot of local spiritual assemblies take that over for people. Maybe they're grieving too much. So that would be natural that you would find someone who's prepared the body before and has their follow their method the, the way they see it and is well respected. Other permissible methods of disposing the body, given the practice. Oh, yeah. So, so here's some modern, some modern things we run into, especially this first one. Given the practice of green burial does not involve interring the dead in a coffin, it would be inconsistent with Baha'i law and impermissible for the believers. Universal House of Justice. So I've seen this recently. Now, the second one I haven't seen, but somebody has seen the Universal House of Justice received your email letter in which you describe a new method being used for disposing of the body of the deceased it has been asked to respond as follows. The House of Justice agrees with your assessment that this process of freezing the body and subsequently shattering the remains into powder form is not in conformity with Baha'i law. Interesting, huh? You wish to know whether there is an explanation for this law given in the Baha'i writings so that you can explain it to non-Baha'i relatives. The words of the law as they appear in the Kitabi Akhtasar is forbidden you to transport the body of the deceased a greater distance than one hour's journey from the city. Rather should it be interred with radiance and serenity in a nearby place. The research department has been unable to locate any passage in the writings giving specific reasons for this law, but if one bears in mind Baha'u'llah's purpose to unite mankind and to free it from any rich, many of the ritual observances and traditional practices which divide one people from another, one can perhaps obtain an understanding of very simple and dignified burial laws he has given us. In past centuries, it's been in practice various peoples to transport the bodies of long distances. I'm going to skip some of this. I'm running out of time. The Baha'i law abolishes such practices. It emphasized the unity of the world and recognized the importance of the spirit as compared with the body. The body of the dead person is treated with reverence. So I wanted to share that because of the... Um, spiritual and the unifying qualities that this burial has. Um, speed things up. This is maybe, this is a very uh, 
important part. Uh, this is very common. Uh, I'm just going to read the, the middle one because a lot of uh, Westerners um, viewing the body is very um, traditional. Your email letter considering view, viewing the body of the deceased of Baha'i funeral has been received by the Universal House of Justice, which has asked you asked us to convey the fact nothing has been found in writing concerning the viewing of the body before internment. House of Justice is not legislation on this matter. Therefore, the decision of whether the body is to be, be viewed is left to the family or those responsible. Free, friends are free to decide for themselves as to the body being viewed. There you go. That is up to the believers. Um, I just want the the dead the 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 face is turned towards the quibla. That's uh, in, for Baha'is. That's um, that's in Israel. That's um, in Akka in Israel, where I'm going to show a picture of the quibla later. But I want to read the last sentence because the portion of burial law is that the body should be laid on its back in a grave oriented so that the feet point towards the quibla and not on its right side with the face towards the quibla as is the custom in Islam. There's another letter later which I found which is interesting to me because it's asked is the Baha'i faith um, copying the tradition of Islam? And, and this sentence was used, and then the House of the Guardian has a statement after that saying, no, this is, if this was a continuation of Islam, Baha'u'llah wouldn't have wrote this because this is contrary to the burial in Islam. So this is a new burial, it's not, it's, it has Christian and has Buddhist and has every religion characteristic. It's unique to Baha'i faith. Maybe the fun part, some pictures that I've chosen. There is no such thing as a Baha'i coffin. The Persians, all of the octus is binding. The, the five cloths of silk and cotton, that's not binding on the West yet. What's binding in the West is to use a coffin made out of um, wood, stone, crystal, and um, later they added uh, composite wood because this is worldwide and um, not, er not every place on earth are, are, um, are the, the enough wood or enough, um, crystal stone coffins available. So you can use um, ordinary wood and it should be as dignified as you can. And there's another writing about coffin liners and the House of Justice said, um, we have found nothing about coffin liners. So you're free to use um, the a liner or not liner, it's up to you. And um, the Baha'i funerals that I've gone to, this is a typical coffin. So, um, and all the Baha'i funerals I've gone to have been closed coffin. But as you've seen, we had a letter before internment, there can be a viewing. And I imagine, uh, and also um, not binding in the West doesn't mean I would choose to follow everything. And even though it's not binding on me, so I don't, I maybe have to revisit my will and put that in my will. I would like to be wrapped in a single sheet or five sheets and have my body washed and not be put. In. There's another writing about clothes because um, the House of Justice says we don't have anything um, to say about that right now. If you want to uh, dress the person in fine clothes or special clothes, you may. So um, 
there's that too. Here's a ring in English. And um, I'm going to read. I can't read that, but I have it here with my ring. And um, I'm going to try and show mine. Um, mine is very old. Mine's in Arabic. This slips on a gold band. And, um, and I can't remember, this is my ring came in this, and it came from uh, Taiwan National Spiritual Assembly. And the ring says, um, this is in the octus. The ring says in Arabic, or, or I suppose it can be in French and Spanish, any language. I come forth from God and return unto him detached from all save him holding fast to his name the merciful the compassionate the ring is meant to be used for those who have, well that's not part of it. those who are 15 years old it's not to be used for children um there's another slide i missed what was that on the ring okay um so that's the ring. It's binding on the Persians and, and we can use in the West if we want to. And the other, th so the one hour journey is binding on all Baha'is. The coffin is binding on all Baha'is, no cre cremation. Oh, I have a bunch of writings and cremation. I'm just, what did happen to those? Um, I should show one of those. Um, and what's the other one binding on us? One hour journey, no cremation, the coffin, probably the prayer. And, um, and we know the prayer. Um, I have I have a couple of stories, personal stories I'm going to put in now. Um, one story is when I was in China, a, a Baha'i died in um, Shanghai or Beijing. And the city ordinance was that you, Baha'is are not to cremate. And there's a lot of writings on this explaining it. So cremation is very popular now, I know. Um, uh, I think there is no rule about the timing of, of it, but we're, uh, we're not supposed to be using, we're not supposed to use embalming that uh, preserves the body for a long time. If the city or ordinance has an, there is embalming, I didn't know this, that is short, just uh, um, effective shortly, and then the body naturally decompose. The body's supposed to naturally decompose and embalming is not advised. Um, so the, the Katabi Akta says from Bahala as soon as possible. And I think a lot of uh, Baha'i funerals I'm aware of, take place within three days. It could take place the same day if the family's all there. So uh, the, the, this is interesting to me, was interesting to me at the time. So the city ordinance was had to be cremated. So the family wrote to the House of Justice and said, what should we do? And the House of Justice said, well, you, you have to cremate. And they said, well, we want to fly the body back to America and, um, and not cremate. Use, and the House of Justice said, well, you're gonna break one of two laws. You're gonna break the law of one hour journey or you're gonna break the law of cremation. It's up to you which law to break. Um, now, I think there's another very important um, letter which I have which I can't find all these because I'm using photos and I can't read the, the print. Um, sanctions are not to be used 
concerning the burial laws. That's from the House of Justice. It's a matter of education. So um, sanctions are not to be used in the matter of breaking the high burial laws. It's a matter of education. I think that's pretty important. Um, so the family chose to fly the break the law of in China, and they they broke the law. Now I I, I lived in China, and much of China had, uses burial of the bed of the just like uh, Baha'is use, just like uh, other religions use. I I heard in China everyone had to be cremated. That's not true. Um, in Hunan province, which is more rural, south central. My, my friend told me they never heard of cremation. Everyone, because I could see, I could see, I saw uh, a, a live funeral in, in Hunan and I could see the coffin looked very heavy to be carrying ashes. They said, well, we never heard of cremation. I'm just gonna show this. This, this is uh, not par part of it <laughs> because when I was studying, just the other day, my, my uh, close Baha'i friend who's Chinese, he took a picture on his hike of a, of a Chinese. This is not Baha'i, this is a Chinese. I just, so I thought, well, this happened while I'm studying this. I got to show, that must mean I'm supposed to use it. So I'm using it. Now we'll go to cemetery. Um, there's a writing that Abdu Baha said, Baha'i should Baha'i Assembly should try to um, have a cemetery, purchase a cemetery. Houston has one. This is the uh, um, the first um, African American Baha'i um, burial in Washington D.C. Pocahontas Pope. Some of you might know William Collins here. So this is her, her tombstone marker. And um, I'm gonna show some notable Baha'is. Here is um, Ella Bailey, a Baha'i from my, I'm in Galveston, but I'm outside of Houston. And um, Ella Bailey was um, on the Berkeley, the first talk by Lua Getzinger. She was on the first Berkeley assembly for 20 years chairperson and died in Tripoli. And here's a more, even more notable Baha'i. Lady Bloomfield married Hippolyte Dreyfus, um, France, Interviewed Abdu Baha for some answered questions, served on the United Nations Children's Fund, uh, served on the League of Nations, uh, founding member of it. So Abdu Baha's devoted maid servant, her glorious service imp imperishable, and her daughter. Um, Baha'is are not to use the greatest name or the ringstone symbol on tombstones, but Baha'i writings and the Baha'i star is very popular to use on headstones. Headstone does not have to be used. I'm gonna show a, a, um, a couple common. So here's, here's a, a typical, uh, Gravestone stone with some Baha'i writings, nice sort of not, if in these days, never to paint things contrary to your wishes have been ordained and manifested by God for days of blissful joy. Heavenly delight are surely in store for yours. And um, the one on the right is Baha'i, uh, military soldier. You see the nine-pointed star. Okay, here's the Baha'i Cemetery in uh, Kenya. The, uh, the Baha'i Cemetery in Houston is also mostly used by Christians, some Jews, some 
Muslims. It's uh, north of the airport here in Houston, the new airport. And um, I saw a, a picture of the, this is old. And um, my friend in Africa told me that the Baha'is are just purchasing their own, their own cemetery. But um, this is the one they had been using. So some of you know where this is. I had, I've been here. This is the Guardian's resting place in London. So this is where Abdu'l Baha and the Bab are buried on Mount Carmel. It's one of the most famous buildings on earth now. And of course, Abdu Baha is going to be moved, maybe within the next year, to uh, his own his own um, shrine, and it will be very close to this one. But the Bab will stay there forever. And the last one is Baji. So there is Baha'u'llah's resting place. And the shrine will be built. I'm kind of thinking that the shrine will be built not too far from now, now that Abdu Mahas. But maybe that it's been explained that um, that shrine will be built later. And that's the entrance. The hollow shrine, that's the Quibla, the most holy place on earth. Okay, this is time for questions. Thank you so much. That was really informative. Um, yeah, so we have time for questions. You can put it, your questions in the chat. Um, the first question is, are there any writings about autopsy and embalming of the body? Yes, as I explained, there, there is. And um, I, I should have two iPads and I could find it. Um, and as a, there is, there is from the House of Justice, the writing on embalming. We're not to use permanent embalming. And I didn't know there's two kinds of embalming. There's a short-term embalming. Um, in natural disasters, where there is a, and this came up during COVID. During COVID, it was permissible to use cremation and embalming because that would stop the spread of disease and stop the, uh, the necessity to someone wash the body and then contact COVID themselves. So um, during natural disasters, of course, this, this can happen. But otherwise, um, embalming and cremation should not be used. And what about autopsy? But yes, um, the, 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 there's writings, Baha'is can use uh, organ donation, and that's part of an autopsy. And um, Baha'is have to follow, Baha'is are asked to follow the city and county and the, the local ordinances. So if the police or medical examiner or um, the local authorities feel a need for autopsy, um, Baha'is are supposed to agree with that. And with asking them that no, um, no organs will be embalmed or, um, or just thrown away. That after the autopsy, after the, the medical science, if you say the donate um, part and it's not used, then it should be buried. And there's no stipulation how that's buried in the House of I remember one letter from the House of Justice said, oh, well, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, they buried it in their backyard. Um, so yes, you, um, you follow the local laws, but you stress and, and you persist in trying not to have a cremation. Um, the next question is, are health departments in the US aware of Baha'i requirements? Well, I think they're learning. I think they're learning worldwide. Uh, and this is a wonderful teaching method because um, I would hope Baha'i assemblies um, would be saying that, um, like we started off, we, we want to unite the world and the Baha'i burial is respecting the human sanctity of life 
and it's all about respect. So, um, and, and I'm sure to the question, I'm sure many local uh, ordinances, authorities are not aware of the Baha'is. Is there a rule about how soon after death we should be buried? As soon as possible. Um, embalming is, even the temporary embalming is not preferred. So if there's no embalming, no cremation, uh, I think we all know, we've all seen um, an animal, how quickly we decompose. So I think um, three days is the maximum you're going to be able to, um, maybe, a, well, four days, maybe two. Um, it has, it, it's, gonna, it's going to be very quick. Oh, I almost forgot my other story. So my first pilgrimage in 97, a, one of the, is a large group of pilgrimage. We had three separate groups separated. And one of the pilgrims died getting to the, uh, at the beginning, I think in a car accident or was it, now it's been so long ago. So I attended a funeral by the House of Justice. And the funerals, uh, I think it was in the location where the, the obelisk is going to be built. And it's now just a field. But what I want to say about that is that is the simplest Baha'i fun uh, funeral I've been to by the House of Justice. So talk about simple. Um, maybe some people are familiar with uh, Priceless Pearl, the guardian's wedding being so, so simple. That's the simplest wedding I've ever seen described. All the Baha'i weddings. And, and we can use extra prayers on the, um, another thing is um, that I had a writing on the, the prayer the Baha'i prayer for the departed, where we say the six verses, we all verily worship God 19 times by one person, it's the only congregational prayer, and then um, a, one Allah Baha in between the six verses, we all verily are patient in God 19 times. So one, that's a congregational prayer, so I'll stand. So we have a little time. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add. So this is uh, about the journey of the soul, death, a transition to life. A friend asked, how should one look forward to death? Abdu'l-Baha answered, how does one look forward to the goal of any journey? With hope and expectation, it is even so with the end of this earthly journey. In the next world, man will find himself freed from many of the disabilities under which he now suffers. Those who have passed on through death have a sphere of their own. It is not removed from ours. Their work, the work of the kingdom is ours, but is sanctified from what we have called time and place. Time with us is measured by the sun, where there is no more sunrise and no more sunset. That kind of time does not exist for man. Those who have ascended have different attributes from those who are still on earth. And yet there is no real separation. Pretty profound. Be not grieved at the death of thy respected husband. He hath verily attained the meeting of his Lord at the seat of truth and the presence of the potent king. Do not suppose that thou hast lost him. The veil shall be lifted, and thou shalt behold his face illumined in the supreme concourse, just as God the exalted hath said, him will we surely quicken to a happy life. Supreme importance should be attached, therefore, not to this first creation, but rather to the future life. I go to mostly Christian. Well, no, I went to several uh, communists or Buddhist in China too, that the uh, sharing, 
sharing the Baha'i perspective on burial is very healing and very welcoming to others. Because I, I find that uh, while the other religions have the same practice of maybe of Baha'i, um, of the eternity and heaven, but they're not quite so certain. And um, Baha'is can offer a certainty to it that they're not quite used to. And just assuredly that your, your loved one is in a better place. Your loved one is happy now. Your loved one is rewarded and freed for his good life and good deeds. I find this, I find that to be um, that people are, are interested in, in the Baha'i perspective. Oh, well, another question. How can we approach a non-Baha'i spouse about Baha'i funerals? Hey, the, you know, there, we have that very uh, profound writing that the, um, the marriage takes precedence. So the first thing is not to force our, um, the most important thing is the harmony of marriage. So if you explain to the best of your ability, um, and there are right quotes, there are quotes about um, non-Baha'is can be buried, can have a Baha'i funeral if they ask. And, and that has happened, that, that non-Baha'is are close enough to Baha'i faith they trust us. So we can give them a Baha'i funeral. We can, uh, non-Baha'is can be buried in a Baha'i cemetery. Um, so um, so you, you, you would, I think from the spirit of that letter, you would, um, you would um, try to get as much agreement from your spouse as possible. Now, um, as to, um, I don't know, as to uh, who, who has authority for this, if the Christian or atheist or Jew has authority, then, you have to comply with this authority and be happy. And there is a writing, there's nothing to stop us from going the next day or that afternoon to the um, cremation site or the grave site or whatever and saying our Baha'i prayers. So if it's a Jewish or atheist uh, funeral, then that's the way it is. Um, and, um, if the wife and husband can't agree, then I, I don't know, but just trying to have, have unity and try not to, uh, a Baha'i, a Baha'i um, husband should not, should never try to offend his, be considerate of his um, non-Baha'i wife's feelings and a, a Baha'i wife conversely should be considerate. That's first, That's, there's a writing to that. Um, and um, there are Baha'i, there, there's, there's Baha'i writings in the House of Justice. There are, have been, and there will be in the future. Um, who's in charge of the funeral? Um, the the non-Baha'i's family might not be Baha'i. Um, so if, if the, um, there, there is a writing, if the non-Baha'is are in charge and they want a cremation, the assembly cannot perform a funeral. The assembly cannot participate in cremating the body. So um, that would, the, the assembly would withdraw and say, we can't do that. But we, we will respect your cremation. We'll respect your, um, your, your, your the authority. The local authorities have decided you're the authority, so um, we will respect it. So I think I skipped this one. So requirements binding on all believers, burial in a coffin without cremation, burial within one hour's distance, 
prayer for the dead, Baha'i funeral services. The, for the burial of the dead, the only requirements now universally binding are to bury the body in a coffin, not to cremate it, not to carry it more than an hour's distance of journey from place of death, and to say the prayer for the dead if the deceased is a believer over the age of 15. March 2016, Universal House of Justice. I appreciate everyone coming today. It was my delight. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Hockness. This was really uh, an interesting topic and definitely something that we should all keep you know, learning more about. So we really appreciate your time today. And um, so our speaker next week will be Ms. Vita Parhami, and she'll be talking about how are Baha'i youth changing the world. So again, these are every Saturday at noon Eastern time, and I put the link to our contact form on our YouTube channel in the chat. We'll end today with a Baha'i prayer for the departed. Oh my God, oh thou forgiver of sins, bestower of gifts, dispeller of afflictions, verily. I beseech thee to forgive the sins of such as have abandoned the physical garment and have ascended to the spiritual world. Oh, my Lord, purify them from trespasses. Dispel their sorrows and change their darkness into light. Cause them to enter the garden of happiness. Cleanse them with the most pure water. Grant them to behold thy splendors on the loftiest mount. Grant them to behold thy splendors on the loftiest mount. Oh my God. O thou forgiver of sins, bestower of gifts, dispeller of afflictions. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Bye.